Ponga.com is one of Nigeria's leading online shopping platforms against the backdrop of an economy racing against time to stave off the devastating impact of a global pandemic. Conga's holding company, Udada.com, continues to expand its operations with a view to not only consolidate its market leadership, but also to sustain a tradition of plowing back into the economy through provision of employment for thousands of young Nigerians. While joining us now to have a conversation is Namdi Eke, co-chief executive officer, Conga e-commerce group and founder, Udada.com. He will, in addition, be talking about plans for further expansion. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Great. Well, uh, Namde is AK. Okay. It's good to have you on the program. Thank you. Conga was acquired in uh, 2018 as yes. a major industry deal. A deal, rather. Yeah. Uh, do you want to tell us uh, what the state of Conga uh, is since that acquisition? As they say in Nigeria, how market? How market? <laughs> <laughs> I think what what Conga has done in the last three years is, is unprecedented. I mean, we acquired the company in 2018. And we've grown revenue by almost 10 times since then. And not only that, but we've also taken a company that was losing millions of dollars a year, and we've taken it to the point where we're, where we're very close to breaking even. And, uh, and um, I must give props to the Conganians, our staff, our customers, and our merchants, who have really put a lot of effort to get us to where we are today. But the reason behind all this, our success, is, is really when we acquired the business, we put a lot of systems, a lot of processes, and, um, and we, we, we did our best to try and work on the culture of the business. Um, so... Um, we also invested a lot of money in, in acquiring um, a lot of uh, logistics and distribution assets. Um, we bought a lot of trucks, a lot of uh, warehouses across the country to solidify our, our logistics channel. And all those efforts, we're beginning to, to reap the fruits of, of, of all those efforts we put in initially and to grow the company exponentially. Um, I, I think today, Conga is probably the most valuable um, technology company to come out of Africa because we've been able to create a model. We've been able to show that the model works. We've been able to show that the model is profitable. And most importantly, no one has ever been able to replicate a model or create a model that works better. So I think Conga is in a very strong position in the market today. Well, just before Tundum uh, comes in, you talked about revenue, how you've been able to uh, increase revenue. revenue. Yeah. Could you put figures to that, maybe like from uh, 5 billion to 200 billion? Uh, yeah. So like we're, we're a private company, so we don't, we don't release our, our figures publicly. But, <laughs> but I can tell you the scale at which we grew it. But I can't quite, uh, without approval from the board, I can't release our uh, figures to the public uh, yet. Yeah, but, but, but I mean, um, like I said, props goes out to the people that work with us. Um, Conga has thousands of world-class staff across the country, and they've really done an amazing job to get us to the point where we are today. And I'm really proud of them. Fantastic. So it's clear that Conga is trending beyond expectations. Yeah. And you did a great job during the pandemic with your delivery service. Yeah. So what's the future roadmap for Conga? Can you give us some direction? Okay, um, Conga has so much in, in our future. Um, one, one industry we've always been interested in is healthcare. Um, a few years ago, we announced that we're launching Conga Health, but unfortunately, we had a few issues with the PCN, which to a large extent have been resolved now. So Conga Health is, is definitely in, 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 the short, in the short to midterm will be coming up. And the idea is that we want to provide affordable and accessible healthcare to the average Nigerians. Um, there hasn't been much uh, innovation in the healthcare sector in the last few years, and we believe that this is, a, this is an industry that's very ripe for disruption, positive disruption. And I think Conga is in the right place to do that. So we have, a, we have our eyes set on, on healthcare. Uh, our board recently approved $30 million investments in healthcare in the next year for Conga. So we're really excited about the potentials, and I'm sure in the next few months you'll see a lot of things rolling out in terms of Conga Health. Um, so for the sake of our viewers, sorry to interrupt, okay. PCN is? PCN is the, the Pharmaceutical Council of Nigeria. They're the ones that uh, monitor all pharmacies, or all, all, all things to do with pharmaceuticals in Nigeria. Yes. And uh, also we have coming up Conga Food. Um, we, we, we've seen what's happening in the market today where people are beginning to embrace food delivery services. And because of our investments in our own logistics and our own network, distribution network, um, we believe that we can beat um, it, or we can create a more efficient delivery network than any player in the market today. So um, we'll, we'll be launching a Conga, Conga food soon. I hope I'll give you guys some vouchers to try us out uh, when we launch. We'd um, love to. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a great, great delivery service. Um, you get your food quickly. You get it while it's hot. And also you get a lot of affordable meals um, through Conga food. Um, and there's so much. Um, um, we even have our, our expansion plans. So when, when Conga was acquired, we had to make a decision. Do we consolidate our efforts within Nigeria or do we expand across Africa very quickly? Uh, we chose to consolidate our efforts within Nigeria because we see Nigeria as a huge market, huge on tap market. I mean, the, the consumer market in Lagos alone is bigger than the consumer market in the whole of Ghana. 
So, so Nigeria is a huge market and a huge untapped market when it comes to retail and, and, and e-commerce. So we, we've gone through that consolidation phase. We've, we've built um, Conga internal processes and systems to, to the extent where we're comfortable. So now we're now looking at expanding across Africa. I mean, th th there's so much. If, if, if I want to talk about the future of Conga, I can talk from now to tomorrow. Um, we even have things like uh, blockchain technology. Recently, we've seen the adoption of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. And if you understand the, the intrinsics of, of a blockchain technology, you know that it's, it's unavoidable. Um, the world has to shift towards that, um, toward, towards that sector because you have immutable systems that are able to scale efficiently and are able to address a lot of problems when it comes to um, digital security. So Conga is also looking at ways we can embrace um, um, blockchain technology. Um, we're looking at use cases for e-commerce and also payments through decentralized finance. So we're looking at so many things. The, the, the future is very bright for Conga. Um, Conga is a company that hopes, to be, that hopes to, be here, to be here in the next 100 years. So we're working on a lot of things um, with, that, with that vision in mind. Okay, let's right. bring in at this point uh, Rufai. Right. Uh, uh, thank you so much. I mean, good to see you again, Namdi. And uh, really excited about how well you guys have done, you know, when you look at the fact that when you acquired Conga from, I think it was from Napstars, uh, there was a lot going on. I mean, we, we know the backstory, but you guys have been able to turn the company around and, and, and just whip it around. You're, you're looking at better fields. What I'm really interested in is a lot of young people you're bringing in dynamic young people. Secondly, I want to talk about the marketplace because, I mean, when you know the, e if you know the e-commerce market, it's about the marketplace. You know, how, what's the strength of the marketplace? Now, you're bringing a lot of innovation with logistics, with health and the likes and all of that in the marketplace. I, I, I want you to know the short-run idea for the marketplace. Is it going to be a place where other people bringing their goods to the marketplace can, can make some money? And what's the long-run idea, you know? Is it, is it going to grow to become the biggest marketplace probably out of Africa, you know, competing with the likes of the big boys like Amazon and the like? I mean, because there's some interesting thing you're doing about the marketplace. Okay, so, so first, let me give a lot of props to our merchants at Conga. Conga has hundreds of thousands of merchants that sell their products on our platform. And our merchants still make up a significant part of our revenue and our business at Conga today. So I give a lot of props to all our merchants who've supported us across this journey. Um, and, I mean, we have interesting stories with our merchants. We have, we have a particular merchant who I met at a merchant forum three years ago. He owned a small shop in Balogu Market. He was selling fashion items, shirts, jeans. And he listed on Conga. And within that period, he was able to increase his revenue significantly. Um, I spoke to him sometime last year. He called me. And he told me that he's now sending his kids abroad for school. So we, we have a lot of people that, that are able to create significant impact in their lives from selling their products on Conga. We actually have a, a, a program coming up on Thursday um, by 10 a.m., it's called the SME Connect program, and it's going to be presented by our amazing um, um, chairman of the Zangos Group, uh, Mr. Liu Stan Eke. And the idea of the program is just to show people how to earn additional income through the Conga network. We have various companies under the Conga network from our e-commerce business, our logistics business, our payment business, our travel business. Conga Food is coming. Conga Health is coming. And there are a lot of ways for SMEs or just young individuals who are interested in getting additional income to make money from that system. So, so uh, uh, um, the chairman of, of the Zanos Group will be presenting, talking about uh, business in Nigeria, and letting them know a few ways that they can make um, additional revenue from, from Conga. So uh, just to continue with your question, um, the Conga Marketplace is definitely a focus for us. Um, our plan is to become, Conga was actually the first marketplace um, to launch in, in, in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, we launched before anybody else, and a lot of people at that point thought that the business model won't work. Um, but, but, but thanks to the great people at Conga, we were able to find a way to make it work and make it also very scalable. So uh, our marketplace is definitely a key focus for us, and, and we plan to, to, to continue to, to, to grow that space and expand that space across the subcontinent. Well, yes. when uh, Tundun was introducing you, he introduced you as CEO of Conga e-commerce yes. and founder of Udala.com. Yes. Uh, what is the connection between both? Are they one and the same? What is okay. the uh, connection? What is the difference? For well, the yeah. benefit of, uh, you know, our viewers. Yeah. And secondly, what are the big challenges mm. that you are about to face since 2018, since the acquisition okay. of Conga? Okay, so the, the, the difference is what happened it was in around 2018, um, Udala and, and the leadership at Conga and, and the investors at Conga started having discussions in terms of how do we partner, how do we work together to grow this space within Nigeria. And then the, the discussions eventually led to an acquisition where we decided to acquire Conga. At that point, Udala was looking at expanding to marketplace. At that point, we didn't have a marketplace. We were doing purely what you call first party. We buy products and we sell it. But Conga had a strong marketplace. Conga is the one, like, like I said, that pioneered that marketplace uh, model in, in, in Nigeria and, and Africa as a whole. So during that period, we thought, okay, instead of building our own systems internally, 
it makes a lot of sense to acquire such a great business. Um, so we did that. At that time, Conga was losing a lot of money. We were able to take Conga to the, to the point where it's almost broken even, which is very important because no, no player in the e-commerce e space today in Africa or in any developing country is able to, to do what we've done by creating a profitable um, e-commerce venture. So that, that's, I don't know if that answers your question about the relationship between uh, Udala and Conga. So at the point of acquisition, we had a tough decision. Do we keep the Udala name or do we adopt Conga's name? I personally took the decision to, to adopt Conga's name because I believe Conga had invested millions of dollars before then to build their brand name. They had a very strong brand name. And so, so I, I thought it would be a waste to waste that amount of um, marketing dollars at that point in time. So we decided to adopt the Conga name and adopt the Udala pink brand color, Fuchsia pink brand color. Yeah, so, so that's the relationship between, between the two. Before we go, I ask you about challenges very quickly because we have less than a minute. Okay, sure, sure. So, um, we, of course, we face a lot of challenges. Um, a lot of challenges have to do with um, logistics uh, in Nigeria, which is why we have to build our own logistics company to address that. Um, Conga today has the most efficient last mile delivery network in the entire home continent. We're able to deliver to the last mile in any, in any state across, across the country. Um, so, so, logistics was a major challenge. Uh, we also had a challenge in terms of uh, internet penetration rates and adoption. Um, but we, we found ways to convince customers through our offline channel to come online and embrace e-commerce. So, the, 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 of course, there will be challenges, but the, the, the point of a business is to continue to solve problems. That's why we exist at the end of the day. Oh, fantastic. I guess we've run out of time, haven't we? Well, I think we still have about a minute. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so my question is how the pandemic affected the e-commerce space, because it dealt mm. a deathly blow to a lot of industries, a lot yeah. of businesses, but not yours. Why mm. is that? Um, so if, if you look at it from the perspective of um, people didn't have much choice at that point in time. So people that were skeptical about trying e-commerce, they were almost forced to, to give it a try. And when, once they gave it a try, they realized that this thing actually works. I can actually, I can actually, I can actually sit at home order for products and get them delivered uh, within a short time. So once people be began to see that, e-commerce e adoption within the country began to increase sig significantly. I mean, in, within the, I think lockdown happened in March last year. Yeah. Within March and April, Congress revenue increased 100%. And th this was when we dropped our marketing spend significantly because we weren't sure about, about what, was, what, what was happening within that, um, within that period. So we saw huge adoption. People across the, the entire country were, were ordering products in volume from us. Of course, we had issues because in Nigeria, state borders were closed. So it makes it very difficult to move your, your products across, across the country. But, so, but we were able well. to deal with these issues and working with the federal and local governments. But I, I mean, uh, it was, I, I hate well. to say the, the pandem pandemic was an opportunity, but it definitely worked uh, towards our benefits. Well, we'd like to thank you very much, uh, Namdi AK, My for joining us. And all the best as you keep addressing the challenges and turning them into opportunities. Thank you very much. Thank you.